Okay, welcome to the next video in this series. Ultimately, we've now got our dedicated server running in Docker via a Docker image. Uh, the next thing is to basically set up Kubernetes running locally and then basically have the infrastructure as code part run to deploy that container into Kubernetes. We're going to set up a local environment to do this uh, just so that um, when testing the game, we can actually test deployments locally rather than having to deploy to test in something like Google Cloud, which is something we'll get to eventually. Uh, but for now, it's best that we can run everything and test everything through our local environment. One of the key things of this project is to basically automate everything and ensure things um, don't require that many manual steps. To do that, we're going to be using a tool called Terraform. It basically is an open source project that allows us to write configuration or HCL, which stands for HashiCorp Configuration Language. And what we can do is basically write as code our configuration for our deployments or infrastructure in Google Cloud, and then run a command using Terraform that then applies that to the relevant provider. So to get started, we're going to install Terraform, which is the CLI we're going to use to apply our HashiCorp configuration language. Um, ultimately, we go to the Linux tab and we pick Ubuntu. We're going to be installing into our Ubuntu Windows subsystem for Linux. So if I bring up Ubuntu and literally just copy and paste these commands, uh, this will get us up and running in no time. So let me just install this. Once installed, you can check that all is well by typing in terraform-help and you should then get a help message within your terminal. And that's it. That's Terraform all installed and set up. Okay, the next step is to get Kubernetes running locally. If you haven't got it already running, then start up Docker for Windows. And in the taskbar, once you've loaded up Docker for Windows, you should see your familiar window. Go to settings. On the left hand side, you can click Kubernetes and click the tick box that says enable Kubernetes. Apply and restart and it will say it will take a few minutes and requires an internet connection. So just hit install and let that run through. And now you'll see an additional icon down here on the bottom left where the Docker engine is running and also now it's starting up an instance of Kubernetes. Once it goes green, you're ready to start deploying applications into your local instance of Kubernetes. Now Kubernetes is enabled, we have our sort of building blocks ready for us to be able to deploy our dedicated server, which we have now containerized. By building that Docker image, we now have a container that can run in Kubernetes, where it will handle automated deployment and scaling for us. It's worth noting that in the future, we're gonna be adding on something called a Gones which will sit within our Kubernetes cluster to allow us to notify and give more context around what's going on within our Unreal Engine game server, such as when a player connects, disconnects, or when the game server itself needs to gracefully shut down. For now, let's just get our Docker image that we built in the previous videos up and running in Kubernetes locally. First things first is we're going to create the folder structure and another .git ignore just to support the Terraform HCL code that we're going to write that's going to deploy our dedicated server into our local instance of Kubernetes. So the first thing is, if you look at the root of our folder, if you've been following along from the previous videos, we have the infrastructure folder. And what we're going to do is create a new folder called local. And this is going to hold our Terraform uh, HCL code that we're going to run uh, and as I say deploy into our local Kubernetes environment. We're going to create another dot get ignore just so that it doesn't include some of the Terraform files that get generated uh, when using the CLI. So again, we'll just create a dot git ignore. I'll put a link into the description. Um, I've already got a pre uh, built version of this. So if I head to this and paste that in here. Again, this is just pulled from the dot get ignore um, examples that are online uh, that are recommended. And we'll just save that. 
Now we're in the infrastructure folder, we now have our .git ignore with the relevant uh, configuration. Just to make sure that we're on the same page, I'm going to rebuild our Docker image just to ensure that that is available in Docker for Windows. So I'm going to go to Ubuntu and I'm in the root of our project here. And I'm going to go into game as we've done previously. And if I go into the Unreal folder, I can then run our Docker build command dash F and point to the Docker file uh, dot server file and tag it. And this time I'm just going to tag it as VS dash server with the dot at the end for the context and hit enter. Okay, so now we've got our built image uh, all ready to go. The next step is to start configuring our deployment into Kubernetes using Terraform. Just a heads up before we start writing the HCL, uh, we're almost there, believe me. Um, I'm just going to use Visual Studio Code, mainly because the extensions and the marketplace provide a really nice uh, HCL support. So as a video, it'll come across a lot easier for you to see the sort of color coding. And it also has obviously IntelliSense and things like that. So I do recommend uh, for this sort of side of things where we're writing Terraform and things like that, Visual Studio Code is probably uh, an easier choice uh, for now. All right, let's build out our first deployment using Terraform. So if we go to File, Open Folder in Visual Studio Code, I'm going to open up the root folder uh, for our project. Once we've done this, on the left-hand side, we can see we've got infrastructure and we've got the folder called local. Uh, we're going to create a, a main file and the extension for Terraform files is .tf. So main.tf. And the first thing you need to do is set up your provider. Now, a provider conceptually uh, tells Terraform where you're going to be basically running your uh, HCL against, whether that be AWS, Google Cloud, or in our case, what we're going to do is actually run it against a local Kubernetes instance. And the provider we're going to be using is called Kubernetes. So let's pop that in here. And by default, we're going to set the config path to the home directory .cube slash config which is the default location for the config of Kubernetes when installing it on your local machine. The next thing we're going to do is initialize Terraform. Uh, and to do that, we can go to uh, our Ubuntu uh, and ultimately go into the infrastructure folder where we're going to go to local. Uh, we've got our main.tf file set up with our provider and we can just run Terraform in it. And what that's going to do is look at the provider, install the relevant stuff and get everything set up, ready to go. Now Terraform's initialized, we can basically start putting in the configuration for our deployment. Um, and to do that, we go into our main.tf file. And what I'm going to do is, you know, get the one I've prepared earlier, like I normally do, so you don't have to watch my bad typing. And then we can go through this line by line. What we've got here is a resource and this does require maybe a little bit of knowledge around Kubernetes itself. Um, the way you typically uh, deploy stuff into Kubernetes is using manifests and all they are, they're nothing scary, they're just YAML files. And what Terraform is doing here is in essence basically creating those YAML files from the configuration uh, that you pop in here. And you'll be like, well, why are we using Terraform to do this? Mainly because we want to automate it uh, and we also want it to be, you know, committed into our Git repository as code. And it also allows more powerful things for variable substitution and reuse uh, later down the line. You can already see here, there's some funky syntax that also allows you to reference other properties from other resources. So in this case, we're saying that the selector here uh, for the value is going to come from Kubernetes deployment.vs, which relates to here from the metadata get that first item and get the labels and then get the value of dot game. So in this case, our selector is going to say the game needs to equal this string of verses. So going through the resources that we're going to create, we have a service uh, in Kubernetes world. A service is basically an entry point uh, or, or a way of exposing your containers that are running. We have a resource that is a deployment and in here, this gives a specification of uh, how you want it to be deployed and what 
uh, what container you want to be deployed. So in our case, if we look through, we have replicas of one, meaning we want to run one of them. Uh, we have some metadata uh, around what labels we're going to give it. We're going to call it, well, we're going to add a, sorry, we're going to add a label called game and we're going to call it versus because that's our game name. And then simply down here, the spec for our template sets up what container to run. So we just built our Docker container and it's called vs-server. So that's the image we're going to specify. We're going to say always use the latest. Uh, typically in production, this is not a good idea, but for now, uh, for running locally, it's fine. Uh, we've set an image pool policy and it's basically saying if not present. So because our images are all local within our Docker engine, We've set this so that it doesn't try and pull it from uh, a public registry or an external registry and fail. Uh, we're giving it a name of vs-server and then we're configuring what port. So think of this as basically doing something similar as publishing ports um, from when we were running it via Docker. So when we did Docker run and we did dash P, it's kind of, I would say, almost an equivalent uh, to look at it in that way. So we're saying the container port that's going to run is 7777 and we have to specify the protocol for the Unreal Engine dedicated server to be UDP. Just going back to the service configuration along the top, we also have to specify the port that we wish to expose and the protocol being the same being UDP. Uh, this port can be a different port if you wish, um, but you will need to specify a target port if that's the case um, as well. Uh, but we're not going to go into that. For simplicity's sake, we're going to say the port is 7777 and the protocol UDP. This selector here specifies uh, what the service will, well, how the service will route traffic. And it will basically pick out any container that has this label of game equals versus, um, as we've noted before, um, and then route traffic to that. The type is low balancer, meaning it will bind the external IP to your local host address, which means it will be available when we try and connect to it using Unreal Engine, uh, well, the, the, the Unreal Engine client, should I say. With that done, we can now head to the terminal and we can see uh, what Terraform thinks needs to be applied. So if we do Terraform plan, it will look at the state uh, file and look at what we currently have deployed in our local Kubernetes instance, which is nothing. Uh, and it will let us know what it thinks needs to be added or changed and updated. Uh, we know that this is a fresh install, so let's just do Terraform apply. It will give you a prompt just to say that you're happy to apply these changes. We're gonna say yes. And then it should then create the deployment and service accordingly. It's now said that it applied com the, apl the apply is complete and the resources are now in Kubernetes. We can check this using the uh, Kubernetes uh, CLI. So a few commands. So kubectl is the CLI and we can do get services. And you can see here we have a name of vs-server. The type is load balancer. The external IP is localhost and we have our 7777. Uh, it's allocated itself uh, an internal port of 30162, but don't worry about that for now. And the other thing we can check uh, quite simply is the resource we deployed as well was a deployment. So if we look at deployments, you can see VS server is there as a deployment. Now we can do get pods, which is another Kubernetes term. And you can see we have a pod running of VS server, a unique ID, and it is one of one and it is running. If you wish to see the logs, you can also do a logs space and then you can copy your pod name and paste that. And you can then see the logs all appear as expected. You can also follow them and keep a, a tail of them by doing dash F and now you're following the logs. So when we connect, when the logs come in, you'll be able to stream those uh, into your terminal. Right, so that looks like it's all worked successfully. The next thing we can do is actually test it. So we can get our pods and we can see that that's running. The next thing we're going to do is follow the logs so that we can test our Unreal Engine client and just to make sure that we can connect to our now running Linux dedicated server within Kubernetes. So if we do logs and put in the pod name with dash F, we can see the logs appear and they're streaming. The next thing we're going to do is go to our game in Unreal. <clears throat> 
So we'll load up the project. We'll hit play. And as before, we can use the tilde key to bring up the console to open. And because it's bound to local host, and we know that, and we've used the default port of 7777, we'll hit open. And in theory, what will happen is we'll get transferred to our server map. And you can see here that we have a log showing our connection to the server. And that's basically it. We now have our Docker image all running in our local instance of Kubernetes using Terraform to automate the deployment uh, for it. It'll become more apparent, as I say in later videos, when we create Terraform config that allows us to also deploy to Google Cloud. So stay tuned for those videos.